Hi everyone and welcome to Good Morning Sunshine here at the Center for Positive Media. I'm Brandon Lee alongside my co-host Carrie Pena and we're very excited to bring this very special guest with us today, Geliana Akin. She is a sole contract practitioner. Geliana, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here. Okay, so for those who are watching right now and they're like, whoa, hold up, wait a second here. What is a sole contract? So if you can explain what a sole contract is and when do we sign that sole contract? Wonderful question. So a soul contract is something that the soul agrees to before it reincarnates into any given life and really talks about the experience that the soul is signing up to have in this human life that it's reincarnating into. So Gal, tell people how you do these readings. I mean, what actually takes place? Wonderful question. I do this based off of their birth name. So the moment a soul is born or a soul you know, comes into existence, a baby is born, we, they're given a name. And this name has a sound frequency. And sound is very powerful when it comes to creating our reality. We hear this in a number of different sacred texts. Uh, two examples I give everybody that we've all heard of, even if we take the Bible, like in the most traditional sense. In the beginning, there's literally nothing until God starts to speak things into existence of all the ways God could create it through sound. In the Hinduism tradition, we have the Om, which is the sound of creation, right? So again, two very different cultures, traditions, both are talking about sound. There are many more texts, but I'm giving you the two that most people have heard of. So the premise is, is that the sound frequency of your birth name creates your entire reality. And what I do is I take your birth name as it was written on your birth certificate, even if it was misspelled, and I decoded into sounds, which tells me the karma that you brought into this lifetime, your unique talents, your goals, and ultimately your soul's purpose. And then what do people do with that information? Depends. I have some people that come in for a reading and it literally activates that them, their purpose, and they go on to a different trajectory. Some people, I'm sure it's in one year now, the other. So I think it really depends on where they are in life and what they are ready to hear. I'll give you the perfect example. So for me, when I was in my very early 30s, I, I went to a psychic fair. You know, I wanted to talk to a psychic, right? It's just kind of a fun thing to do. And I sat in front of her. I just picked this random one. I sat in front of her and she looks at me and she said, you're sitting on the wrong side of the table. You need to be doing readings for people. And I thought to myself, oh, I picked the kooky one, right? Out of all the psychics here, because at that point in my life, I wasn't ready to hear it. So when you ask me that question, what do they do with information? It really depends on where they are on their own path in life. It's fascinating. The first reading, the first time I spoke to a spiritual advisor, her name is Kate. She's in South Africa and she works with stones, right? Different healers have different gifts, right? They're able to kind of tap into different gifts that they were given, right? And so the first one that she ever did on me, and I, and I always reflect, that was really a changing point in my, in my trauma, in my journey from healing from trauma. And that she said, Brandon, I'm actually just gonna translate word for word what I am getting rather than me trying to imply. And it said, Brandon, you chose a very difficult life. You chose this. And just hearing and then finding belief in that helped me. Cause I'm like, I chose this and I chose this for a purpose. And I think if we start to look at those life's ups and downs, and we're like, I'm not victim to this. I chose this. Why did I choose this? And allowing what you're doing to be kind of the, the spark that some people need to then understand how do I heal from some of this that I have experienced? I don't like to use the word suffer, but that I have experienced, that is how I found my life's purpose. You know, uh, two and a half years ago, I was anchoring the news. I felt stuck, I wasn't happy, and I always felt in my gut, I am meant for something greater than this. Not greater in the sense that what you're doing is not good, but greater in the sense is I am meant for something so much greater than this life that I'm living. It was then after that reading when I began working with shamans and working in the healing realm that it was revealed to me so much of what happened to me in my early childhood was meant for this purpose of which I am living now. So I think it can be like Kate was for me, a spark 
to really go on this, on this spiritual journey of healing. Absolutely. And did this happen between the ages of 35 and 42? Yes. Okay. So this is literally when you're meant to be stepping out of your ego consciousness and into your soul's desire. There you go. Yeah. And 40 is another magical age because 40 is the age of transformation. So um, Carl Jung said this, everything up until the age of 40 is just a, a research. 40 is when we actually begin living. And 40 is when I quit the news and I open up part of our soul. And 40 is when I made the transition as well. What's next for you? Uh, this, but bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people are receiving this. They're, you know, information is power. And I'm, what I'm hearing from you is people are at least examining what this looks like. Some people might think, oh, this is woo-woo, but let me kind of see, because that can empower me to even just learn a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm finding that a lot of people are really in this awakening phase and they're really interesting and they're really curious. And this is a sort of a numerology, right? So again, I'm working with the sound frequency of somebody's name. So it's for some people it is woo-woo, but you can literally see the science in it as well. That's right. Well, you're a science, that's your mind, which is funny because that's your background, you know, data and technology. And so where can people find out more? and get in touch with you, so, even though you're booked up for a year. So but that's okay. If they want I to try to have, get on the list. Uh, the, I have the digital soul contract that people can get, which most people do. And I'm all over social media. So on Instagram, uh, soul underscore contracts underscore practitioner. And I think if you just put in soul contracts, I come up and it's the same exact name on TikTok. So for you, making this change in your life, how do you feel sitting here today? You've accomplished so much. This is such a beautiful journey, and I'm incredibly proud of you. How do you feel sitting here? Thank you. I, I feel amazing. I think whenever we find our soul's purpose and we step into it, it's just so fulfilling that I don't know what words to put on it. The fact that I was able to discover it and step into it, and the fact that my purpose is to help other people discover their purpose, I feel, I feel blessed to be alive. You're a total rock star. Aww. Love you, girl. Love you. And thanks to all of you for joining along with us here on Good Morning Sunshine. We have new guests every week, just like Gal, total rock stars in their field. And we're just trying to share out information to help people heal and live their best life. Yep, and you're already here. So while you're here right now, go ahead and click that bell notification symbol. We will alert you every time we upload a new episode. Have a great day.